welcome to the business as usual podcast this is episode 15 and it is the first episode of a new series we're going to start doing every two weeks it's going to basically be a topic study this one is going to be on ansoft's matrix which is one of the key theories underpinning year 13 business uh, we're going to also focus on apple as well which is a business obviously everyone will have heard of if they're studying a level business and you've got to this point i'd be shocked if you've not heard of apple we are going to do these we're going to alternate these as we go through the the rest of the year especially as the lead up to towards exams um comes up in the next few months we've got about just less than three months until the exams are finished so we're going to start to do a little bit more revision on the podcast rather than just doing the news we're going to do the news every sort of two weeks and then we're going to alternate mike and i are going to alternate between doing one of these topic studies where we're just going to pick a key a key topic a key focus and we're going to just do 10 15 minutes about that and and talk about sort of how you can apply that to examples and what you really need to know so this one is about ansoff's matrix so ansoff's matrix was developed by igor ansoff and effectively it just looks at strategic decision and how much risk is involved in different decisions that businesses make and i'll put on the if you're watching this on youtube i will put a, a graphic of the ansoff's matrix on the screen so you can have a look at it but it's not going to be like a video presentation or anything like that that's all you need to do is just have know what the graphic looks like what the what the matrix looks like and you've got four main sections to it but they're split into two categories you've got the market and whether the market is a new market for the business or whether it's a current market for the business and you've got the product and again whether it's a product that the business has already got out so an existing product or whether it's something that's new to the market and in each of these four boxes we're going to go through them one by one you've got different levels of risk with the box in the top left which is market penetration being the least risky and the box in the bottom right hand corner which is diversification being the most risky and the questions that you've really got to ask are is the product that the business is bringing out or marketing an existing product one that has been out for a while and they've got some experience with or if it's new and if it's new then that carries a bit of risk with that because you're entering into unknown territory and especially if the product hasn't got a huge amount of history, maybe that's something that you don't know if consumers are going to want it. Similarly with markets, if you've studied anything about globalization, you'll know that loads of different markets, especially geographical markets, have completely different tastes and completely different cultures. And so if a market is a new market, that obviously carries a bigger risk as well. And Ansoff's main contention was that the further away a business goes from what they currently do and what they already know, the more risky it is and, and the higher the risk of failure. But as you probably quite often hear in life and in business, sometimes the greater the risk, the greater reward. And so Apple is an example of a business that's embodied this. They've taken huge risks and they've been really successful. But we're actually going to start on the safer side of things. We're going to start with market penetration. So market penetration is any activity that the business does where they are focusing on an existing product in a current market. So this is already something they're doing. And so maybe this isn't something big and exciting but it's something that's essential to ensure that the products that we've got out there if we're apple in this situation are continuing to do well continuing to gain market share and so in terms of examples there's no real need to go into huge depth and specific examples with this but anytime they make maybe a change to the pricing strategy with an existing product um, or an ad campaign for example for something that would be an example of market penetration so one of the most common pricing strategies that Apple uses is, is price skimming. And price skimming is where you start with a high price because you've got a product that's usually quite unique and innovative, which most of Apple's products are. You start with a high price, you get the early adopters, the people who just have to have the latest Apple product. And after a period of time, they've all bought it. And so you're going to drop your price a little bit. And especially after a period of time, after six months, when you may be readying for a replacement product, which we'll talk about in a minute, you might then drop your price further or do some extra advertising to try and get the last sales out of this product before it becomes effectively obsolete and effectively replaced. So when they drop a price of a product, for example, maybe last year's iPhone, that would be an example of market penetration. They're just trying to get further sales and further market share in that market from the product while they can. The, that, that's, the, that's the safest option. The second least risky is to do product development and that is where we're still in the same market so we're still targeting the same consumers as before but we're bringing out a new product and t you would usually only do this if you have an idea that this product is going to be successful and so for apple that tends to be the sequels so new versions of products such as the iphone recently they've had a huge amount of success apple with the airpods and the airpods 2 came out over the over the last few months 
And this is sort of their core growth strategy. Apple's biggest success comes from their ability to recognize what's going well and to keep doing it. And so we're, I think we're up to the iPhone 11, but obviously that's 11 series. There's also sort of sub sections of that series where you've got different versions of different phones with different specs, some with a slightly bigger screen, some with a slightly better camera, for example. But anytime they bring out a new version, this is what they would call product development. And usually this is, they have a pretty good idea that this is going to be successful because they've got a lot of consumer loyalty. They've got a lot of people who have bought Apple products for a long period of time and are going to continue to buy Apple products each time a new one comes out. To just demonstrate how important this is to Apple, in 2018, Apple invested $14 billion into research and development. And a lot of this research and development isn't necessarily looking at new things in terms of new products for new markets, which we'll talk about towards the end. It's Some of it's just to look at ways to improve the products that they've already got and a way to keep sort of stepping up because if they don't, someone like Samsung will. And it's a, it's a very much a two-horse race in that market, or you could argue Huawei are getting involved in that as well. And with their sort of huge growth and market share. But if Apple don't step up their products, Samsung will. And then Apple will lose market share. So that's product development. And that's more risky because obviously with a new product, you don't know if people are going to like the features. But for a business like Apple, that's not hugely risky because they wouldn't be making the second version of a product. They wouldn't be developing this product further if the first one hadn't been a success or they didn't have a clear way they could improve it. Starting to get into the riskier side of things now is market development, which is when we are taking an existing product into a new market. And so this is something that Apple do quite a lot and have done certainly over the last sort of 15 years. What they quite often do is they authorize new sellers in markets where they don't currently have a presence. So rather than just sort of jumping in for themselves, they'll find sellers who want to sell Apple products and they'll authorize them to do so. And they can, they can get a little bit of a taste about how the market's going to receive Apple. Um, 2006 was the first time they launched a retail store in China. And as you can imagine, the Chinese market with its growing wealth and obviously huge population has become a bit of a stronghold for China and they've established themselves significantly since then. So it tends to be, you know, looking into the emerging economies, Asia, for example, um, late uh, on, it'll be Africa if it hasn't already started. They'll start to target these emerging economies with their products to try and sort of develop themselves into even more of a worldwide brand. And I think Apple, it's fair to say, are one of the most worldwide known global brands. So that's market development. And this does carry a bit more risk because, as I mentioned at the top, you know, these different markets all have different tastes and different sort of established businesses that already might be operating there. And I don't know if many of those can compete with the likes of Apple, but consumers might have different perspectives about what they want from a from a electronic device and obviously cultures they might not rely quite so much on electronic devices as, as we do in the uk and other sort of big developed economies so there is a bit of risk there it's definitely more risky than product development because there's more variables in a new market the most risky option of course is diversification and diversification is where apple have had their most success because this diversification has led to them being able to go in there with their core growth strategy of product development. And I've got some examples of when they first brought different products out. So for example, the first Mac, so the first Mac computer was in 1984. And then they kind of focused on that computer market for quite a while until the early 2000s when they started to diversify into new markets with new products. And so the iPod, the first iPod came out in 2001. And for about sort of six years or so, that was their biggest growth product. But that was a risk, you know, to launch an MP3 player was something new for Apple. It's something that they'd not done before. And it is a bit uncharted territory and it's, it worked out very well for them, obviously. Following the success of the iPod and with the development and technology towards mobile phones, 2007 saw the launch of the first iPhone. And as you can imagine, the growth in technology has just allowed that to become absolutely huge. I think there was a point at which in 2016, something like 70% of Apple's sales came from the iPhone. And that's fantastic because it shows how successful the iPhone is, but then it also creates its own risk because it, it sort of furthers the need for Apple to diversify because you don't want to keep all of your eggs in one basket, even if that basket is as profitable as the iPhone series. They then in 2010 launched the iPad, another example of going into a new market. I don't think the iPad's going to last quite as long. I think the technology with the phones is 
kind of led to the phones taking over from the iPad, even though the iPad came in after the iPhone. Um, they're certainly towards the, if not in the decline stage of the product life cycle, certainly getting towards there. And so I guess the next question really, and, and, and sort of the last thing I'll talk about on this podcast really, is what is next for Apple? And so what are their further strategies? And so I've, I've done a little bit of research on this, and these are the kind of things that are listed for Apple in the coming the coming year. So these are all, the first examples I'm going to go through are examples of product development. So we've talked about new versions, the AirPods, for example, AirPods second series, the iPhones. Well, there is a new iPhone coming. It is, they've actually got two new iPhones coming. They've got the iPhone SE 2, which is a little bit of a low cost phone. So this is for the people who don't want to spend sort of 40, 50, 60 pounds a month on a, on a phone contract or spend 1000 pounds on a phone up, up, like up front. The iPhone SE had a reasonable amount of success as a sort of low cost option, but still allowing the access to the app store and what have you. That's coming in the early part of 2020, although it'd be interesting to see how much the uh, coronavirus has, has had an impact on that. The iPhone 12 is coming late 2020. Again, potentially could be delayed, but the iPhone 12 series is expected towards the back end of the year. And so that's probably their flagship product development and they will be expecting that to make a huge amount of money. They're also launching the sixth series of the Apple Watch. So there's a bunch of different things that Apple are doing to continue that product development where they've used that $14 billion of, of research and development spend to try and come up with better products and improvements on products that they've already got. I did find some diversification. Obviously, we've looked at four examples with the Mac, the iPhone, the iPod, and the iPad about how Apple have been so successful with diversification. It's only sensible to have a look at what diversification might be coming in the future. And so two things I saw. Over-ear headphones are apparently rumored. The AirPods have been an absolute revolution. And as we said, as I said a few minutes ago, how a Apple kind of rely on the iPhone to a large extent. Well, the AirPods have really, really helped with that. They're expensive, of course, and they don't look like much because they just look like normal iPod earphones, but without the wire. But they are really, really high quality. I know a lot of people who've got them who say they're actually really good. They didn't necessarily think they'd be as good as they actually are. They are at the forefront of technology for Bluetooth in-ear headphones. And it looks like they're starting to consider to go into the over-ear headphones a segment of that market as well so obviously a new product and it's and I, I think it's a fairly it's fair to say it's a different type of market because i think consumers who want in-ear headphones or over-ear headphones tend to be I, I think that's enough to qualify that as a different market but there are two examples that are very much diversification so it's much much more risky diversification but potentially much more profitable um augmented reality smart glasses are on the agenda for for apple so it'll be interesting to see how they can how they can use augmented reality to create smart glasses um, and the Apple car. Now the, the move to electric technology for cars is something that's been talked about a lot. And a lot of people are going to be starting to think that way. I, I certainly know that once my uh, beloved car, Madeline, my car is called, it's an Alfa Romeo Giulietta. Once Madeline goes to that scrap heap in the sky, I will be looking to get an electric or at least a hybrid car to try and sort of lessen my impact on the environment. Uh, Apple are looking at launching one and obviously this is a huge risk because that's a that's a huge financial undertaking in a market that they've had absolutely no experience in but they're not the only ones doing that Google are doing the same thing or trying to at least so Apple's electric car it'll be really interesting to see how that how that comes about so hopefully this sort of rundown maybe 12 13 minutes of this rundown on Ansoft's matrix is helpful as you move towards your revision if you have a look in the comment in the in the description I'm going to attach a document that you guys can fill in just to sort of check that you understand what Ansos Matrix really, really is looking at. And have a look next Monday or Tuesday when we'll be launching our next news story um, podcast. So we'll look at another news review. I can't think that anything significant has happened in the news over the last few days. So I don't know what we'll have to talk about there. Don't forget that you can follow and subscribe on Instagram. You'll be able to find us at business as usual underscore. You'll be able to follow us on anchor.fm forward slash business as usual podcast or on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash A level business where we'll be putting on a load of revision videos because there's a chance that you guys might need them, especially if the schools close. So follow us, subscribe, and check out the latest stuff that we're doing. We'll be continuing to update this over the next few months as we lead up to the exams. Cheers. <laughs>